Hello and welcome to Low Volume Smallformfactor.net's podcast. My name is Josh Ramirez, aka Playful Phoenix. And we're back! It's Woo! been so long. I'm so happy to be here. Oh my goodness, we have quite a bit to share, but of course, we'll start with introductions. I am joined today by the other two Jays. Naturally, we start with the New Zealand J, aka John Morrison, aka Confucius. How are you doing? Fan freaking tastic. Fan freaking tastic. <laughs> yep. And then that person chuckling, judging New Zealand Jay in the background, is uh, <laughs> temporary Japan Jay. <laughs> <laughs> James Shell, aka Apophobia. How are you doing, uh, James Son? <laughs> I don't think James Con. Well, if you're, if you're going to transliterate it, it would be uh, James. James. But, uh, yeah, doing good. <laughs> Just uh, drowning in Hello Kitty paraphernalia. Yes, we were talking about that before we started the recording. And tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> they and... were talking about that before we started the recording. And we've just lost no our Japanese audience. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's just lose everyone. Let's offend everyone before we even start talking about anything of substance. I can't think of a better way to spend our time. <laughs> that sounds on Top Gear. <laughs> 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 oh boy all right well before we get too off the rails uh obviously it's been a while since we've recorded um so we're we're really happy to get this episode out there i think we're also really happy because um part of the reason why it's been challenging for us for to get time to record has been that we've been super super busy um you know naturally a big part of that's just sort of the day-to-day -day operations of, of maintaining the forum which is continuing to grow as well as uh maintaining the content that we publish for uh sff network uh, that being said, there's also been a fair amount going on behind the scenes that we've been reasonably tight-lipped about, but I think at this point we're ready to to sort of elaborate on what we've been working on and what's uh, been going on. Um, so without further ado, I think uh, now would be the appropriate time to let our listeners uh, know, and we'll have a post on uh, SFF Network shortly detailing this as well, uh, that, you know... Uh, we did a whole bunch of stuff uh, earlier on um, to try and raise money to to see if we could send um, some folks to to Computex. Uh, and as we said at the time, Computex is actually perhaps the most important conference of the year for us, given the fact that um, it really has the most participants in the form of companies and announcements in the form of new products and other initiatives um, that actually pertain to what we do, to what the small form factor community is all about. I mean. Um, you know, in terms of PC assembly components, availability of those things, what have you, you know, Computex is kind of where it's at. Um, we have been able to report from afar, you know, looking at the reporting that other folks are doing and basically doing some of the grunt work to identify um, articles of interest specifically to our community. Uh, but nothing can really compare to what our capacity would be if we could actually have a person or two on the ground going to vendors having conversations sort of pursuing precisely the sort of uh, news announcements and developments that are of interest to us the challenge of course is that that's not an inexpensive thing to do i mean none of us are really closely located to uh, taiwan taipei specifically which is where computex is held um so it was always sort of a dream uh, as well as a challenge to to one day maybe be able to get us there. Um, but, you know, we, we tried. We did our best. We did a fundraiser, and we've had um, some conversations with um, various uh, projects, creators, vendors. Uh, and so at this point, I think we're ready to share the fact that, indeed, we have reached our funding goals. Uh, and so as such, we're actually going to be sending not one, not two, but all three J's to the conference. That's a hundred percent J turnout. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> the best, the best, but we're actually doing a little bit more than that. We've uh, been able to work with, uh, you know, a fair number of folks um, within the community. So it won't just be us three that'll be attending. Um, we'll also have, I, I keep on losing count. It's like how many additional folks, how big is our team at this point? Uh, three uh, to four extras. On how you count it, but it it depending on how you count it, I think six to eight six. people total. Yeah, hmm. yeah. So like we're at the point where it's not just like three dudes wearing branded t-shirts having a good time. It's like we're we're an operation. Like we're making paper itineraries. We're like communicating across five different time zones, trying to get all this worked up 
lined up together, get everyone on the same page. We have a production it has schedule. Been, we have a production schedule. We have crews, like independent crews, so that we can have separate groups covering different elements of the conference and meeting with different folks at different times of the day. We have uh, meetings with manufacturers. Yeah, I mean, needless to say, you know, and I hope this comes through with the content that we put out uh, throughout the duration of the conference, but it has been an absolute Herculean effort um, to do everything from lining uh, lining up sponsors um, who we can't thank enough for giving us the resources to be able to do this, uh, to figuring out travel plans of everyone, getting everyone at the right place at the right time, uh, to lodging, to reaching out to, to vendors to organize time to meet, to meet with them and talk with them, to looking at the schedule as it's being um, published by Computex and understanding how we want to navigate each day to make sure that we're covering all the things we think are going to be important. I mean, it, you know, plus managing technology. I mean, just, it's insane. Um, I don't think I had any reasonable sense of how much work it was going to be. I'm sure that John at the very least will agree with me. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's been a challenging few months and the, no kidding. These couple of weeks uh, and the next couple of weeks are buttoning up everything before we get there. I just, I mean, I work a 40 hour day on my day job. I'm going to be working at least that at home, getting everything sorted. <laughs> and then <laughs> but here's the event, thing. we're going to be doing at least an 80 hour week. Yeah. No kidding. But, but here's the thing. We just couldn't be more excited. And, you know, we were talking about this uh, before we started the recording, but, you know, us being able to send even just like a guy or like one person to, to Computex was sort of like a goal for us for Small Form Factor Network in like 2019, maybe, if we were lucky, right? Um, if you had told us a year ago that this was an operation that we would have, A, the ability to pull off, B, the resources to pull off, and C, frankly, just the support from the from from the volunteers from the community that are joining us through to just the fact that we have a base of readership and a community that makes this sort of um thing sustainable i mean we would have thought you're freaking crazy yep. um so you know i uh, i just want to make the point that like i think we're all profoundly you know grateful for the fact that this is an experience that we get to have but that we also get to share with everyone um so all that to say, uh, in just a few short weeks, <laughs> Computex begins, and uh, we're super excited about that, not only because it's the biggest event of the year, um, but because it's also the most important, and we're going to be on the ground. We're going to have a really big, really great team of folks. Uh, we're going to be as methodical as we can to sort of scope out conversations with vendors and look for the appropriate announcements such that we can provide the sort of uh, coverage targeted towards what we care about as SFF enthusiasts. Uh, I mean, it's just going to be great. We're so excited. I still can't, I still kind of don't believe it's actually happening. Like I think the night before I'm going to like have a mini panic attack and be like, oh shit. Oh shit. We got, we actually have to do this now. Yep. Um, but, but I'm also just so, so excited. So we'll have a lot more information to share about that. I think we're going to be um, releasing some, some teaser information leading up to it. And uh, with respect to, <clears throat> obviously, you know, a lot of the reason we're able to go is from the support we got from the community, uh, folks that have um, status on, on the forum, you know, bronze, silver, gold, that, that, that was a, a con contribution. We also did a swag sale. So we sold t-shirts and coffee mugs and sweatshirts and all this. And that also provided some financial support. Uh, we also have a few sponsors that we've worked with. Uh, and uh, as we approach uh, the conference, we'll we'll share more information about who will be working with us. And I think you'll recognize some of the names, needless to say. Uh, but uh, until that point, uh, you know, I think all that we have to share is that we're going. We have a big team. Uh, and the last thing, actually, John, if you want to speak to it, we're we're going to be experimenting with a new media format. If you if you catch my drift. Ah uh, yes. Um... Well, up until now, we've been basically running uh, only written content, and it's relatively easy to put out. We don't have time frames to do it. Editing's relatively easy, that kind of stuff. So with having the kind of crew that we're putting together um, at the event, we've, we're taking the opportunity to start doing video content with uh, all three Js presenting videos. Um, and I'm really excited because it, it's a format that we haven't really 
used before a small form factor network and basically it enables us to show us things that we can't show you in written articles like views around something or as you take something apart or talking to representative representatives of these companies and interviewing them as a flowing conversation and indeed indeed uh and as a side to that um we're planning on the next low volume podcast to be a video podcast to be held on the Friday of the event. And that will be live streamed. Woo. Yep. Uh, also during the, all our pretty faces. Yep. And <laughs> that's, but that's not all. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, just as a reminder to subscribe to our YouTube channel, to our Facebook page, to our Instagram that will linked on our website. Um, during the event, I'll be doing Instagram live videos as needed. I uh, may do some Facebook live videos. Um, and on our YouTube channel, we'll be streaming the low volume podcast and publishing all these videos. Uh, if you don't have the ability to watch videos, say slow internet connection or data cap, we'll still be doing written articles on quite a lot of stuff, but videos will be our focus for most of the event. Yes, indeed. And, you know, we mentioned we, we do calls <laughs> to social media and all these things. There's going to be so much going on during this event and we want to communicate it quickly. Um, but we also sort of want to convey as much information as possible, but not do it in like a sort of stupid way or inaccurate way or what have you. So you'll notice a reliance on many different formats and channels throughout the duration of, of Computex. And that's really a uh, experimentation. I mean, we're trying to figure out this newfangled technology thing that we honestly just don't have much experience in, but it's also sort of a tool for us to be able to just get lots of information about what we're seeing on the ground mm -hmm. out quickly uh, and in a way that's sort of accessible to folks, digestible to folks, um, and just easy, easy for us to handle. I mean, if we just wrote articles for everything, it'd, it'd be crazy because those require so much work. And if we did just videos for everything, that would be kind of crazy because that's sort of a restrictive format in certain respects. So it'll be kind of a balance Indeed. Uh, across all these form factors, but it, it'll be it'll be a hot mess, but it'll be a fun hot mess. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to try and keep the content light. The stuff that's not really, what's the word for it? The stuff that's happening at the time that doesn't really need to be saved for perpetuity is going to go up on Instagram or Facebook, but the stuff that we want to keep on the site or for you guys to see will be youtube yes yes so high head head or not headlights big stuff look for videos look yep. for companion articles on small form factor network that stuff yep. will definitely get coverage of those channels but there'll be plenty going on in the periphery and for, for folks that are interested in that you'll want to look towards social media and, and related channels and we'll be pushing out content through there as well and shenanigans uh, and shenanigans. So many shenanigans. Oh, yeah. man. We're, no, well, we're, we're known for our shenanigans. <laughs> After the conversations we've had in the, uh, in the uh, company chat the last couple of weeks, if anything's go by, there will be some fun. <laughs> yes, lots of fun. <laughs> oh, man. All right. I think that covers everything in terms of the lowdown on, on what we're going to be doing for Computex. So... Uh, you know, I think the obvious uh, next question will be. Oh no, we've got one more I've thing. Got Go one more it. thing. Uh, one more thing. On the Friday evening of the event, if uh, all goes to plan, um, anyone who listens to our podcast and or and listens to us and follows us, if you can get to Taipei, uh, we're going to be doing a meetup. Yes, we are. <laughs> Drinks on John. No. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'll be, I'll, I, want to, I would like to. St <laughs> yeah. John, you're so you're so generous. I, 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 I words cannot express it. Don't say anything else. Don't say anything else. Just thank you. Thank you so I, much. I just want to meet the community, and uh, the drinks are not on me. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you give me the money first, and then I can go buy them. <laughs> a generous donation to buy you beer Ooh, i'm top shelf yeah <laughs> beer beer's not gonna cut it all right well we'll have more information on that um honestly when we get there because i we're think we're gonna wait to go. coordinate yeah time and place uh when we have a sense of like what the hell's going on 
Um, but yes, so if you want to actually meet these beautiful faces in person, which I'm sure will be even more beautiful after an 80 hour work week, in effect. Oh, I'm gorgeous. <laughs> I'm just gorgeous. fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. There we so. go. So yes, plenty, plenty to look forward to, plenty, plenty going on, and and once again, our thanks to to everyone that uh, is part of the community that reads the stuff that we publish and do, and that just supports us either through just participating um, or through sort of going that next step and you know uh, being a supporter in the forum or, or otherwise. Uh, we appreciate it. This is for you guys. This is for you. Thank you. So, <laughs> thank you. So with that. Uh, now we know what's going on, um, but we're sort of at the point where, you know, Computex is actually pretty close. Um, we're getting, you know, trickles of information, sometimes leaks, sometimes coy anecdotes from uh, PR representatives that might be slightly off guard uh, to get a sense of so actually what's going to happen during Computex. Um, so I figured that the obvious thing to sort of wrap up this this episode on uh, given that it's basically pre-gaming computex 2017 would be sort of going around the the virtual table here and figuring out what uh, you all are, are most looking forward to uh, and that could be something where there's an announcement it could be something where there's a rumor it could be completely made up and you just for some reason firmly believe it's going to happen I, i'm really not going to judge so i'll start with you john what are you looking forward to Many, many, many things. Uh, the what's the word for it? The best case scenario for me is every manufacturer has come out with something small, mm. but that's not going to happen. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> like I said, it could be ridiculous. I was gonna, I was gonna go with teleportation personally. But... I, I can think of certain manufacturers who just don't get the what small actually is. <clears throat> Phoenix. Um, so my what I think will would be good to see um all of the am4 mini itx boards that have been rumored so we'll actually get to see the other boards that not just the biostar one or two um cryo rigs revisions of the was it the taku and the oka i can't uh, remember I think the name. It was the ola ola yeah. yeah those two cases that they uh showed to us last computex and said they were about a year away. Well, it's about a year away. Well, it's been a year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> give me, give me, give me, give me. Yeah, I want to see what those are like because they look very promising from a design and small form factor perspective. Yeah, what a great first foray. I mean, reserve judgment until we actually like can have see the thing them. in front of us, but they certainly look awesome. Yeah. I'd, um, I'd pay money for that. The uh, under, under monitor one, definitely. Trash can, not so much. Um, <laughs> it'd be good to get a hands-on with the Corsair One. Yes, which we haven't really covered, but is a really interesting uh, concept. Wait, wait, which one? The Corsair One. The, the Corsair uh, One. Which one's the, that? The the tall cubie. Whoa, thing. whoa, whoa! Okay, I don't know. I don't know what your drink. I don't know what's in the water in Japan, but you need to g Google it. Google. <laughs> It's it's interesting, so, uh, so maybe there are listeners who aren't familiar with it, but like, you know, we love to give Corsair a bad rap about the fact that they don't understand how time and space works and their designs are <laughs> incredibly inefficient and what the hell are they thinking and, and things like this. We love them dearly, but like, dear God. Uh, <laughs> so the Corsair 1's interesting. It's a pre-build, right? Sort of in a similar vein to the Bulldog. Um, however, it's a pre-build that's actually very, very compact. Um, the layout is sort of tall and skinny. Um, which we've seen on a number of occasions. And in general, Silver it's sort Sony of interesting. Mini. Well, as an example. I mean, I think, sure. It, it, it's hard. I can't think of any case or other pre-build that looks similar enough where I'd say it's directly comparable. But in general, yeah. that's sort of a layout where everything is tall and standing up and whatever. Yeah. Um, the intention for that is to, A, try and sort of fit things in a way where they're close together so you can get compactness. But B, and this is almost more important, you're really just trying to get the actual footprint of the thing to be as small as possible. So even if the volume is a little bit larger, just the fact that it takes up more, or excuse me, less real estate on your desk in terms of like square square inches or whatever you want to measure, 
um, itself is sort of an accomplishment and is what makes it small, even if it's like a little large, or even if you could theoretically make it smaller still if it was like a shoebox container, but then that shoebox takes up way more desk space. I'm so it's also, interesting. It uses high-end hardware. It doesn't um, use a blow fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all in all, it's just, I mean, it's a very, it's definitely a departure from um, what you'd expect Corsair to be to be pushing out. And they, I think it's a departure mostly in a good way. They're watching the um, community and they're learning. Yes, and basically. And that's, yeah, and that's a, it's a great thing to see. And I think that, you know, the other thing too is that like their design for that, for that is one of their better designs it's, kind of across their products, at least in my subtle. opinion. Like it's, a, it's not so flamboyantly masculine and oh, gamer. Ah, like, yeah, subtle is prob- probably the right word. I mean, it's, it's, it's nice. subtle on the cool CSGO. Cool <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully we'll get some time uh with that obviously some time with corsair as well to mm. to thank them for, for for making this thing or at least yeah. hopefully sort of listening I, you know i i'm well yeah review <laughs> sample would be awesome i'd be awesome but you know I, I, it's sort of interesting to me because you know i remember when the bull, bulldog came out and boy what a disappointment that was for us at least just given mm. the fact that like you know, I mean, they're like, oh, here's this home theater PC and yada, yada, yada. And it's just like, this thing is massive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, and, and it, it feels like it feels like the Corsair one, although obviously the form factor is different. They don't really sell it as a home theater PC, just as a compact PC. But I, I like to think that they learned a lot from from that release and yeah. sort of. Uh, became super constructive with it and, and took in that those observations and feedback uh, when they actually made the one and um, you know even if I don't know I'm just I'm 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 happy I'm happy with this I'm happy with um, the work Corsair did I'm looking forward to what comes next um, but yeah it'd be nice if we could actually get to see it because I've yet to see it in person and back to me just photos <laughs> <laughs> yes back to you yeah I was talking um i want to see that, that uh was it the, the dell 8k display oh i just, I God, just want to yes. see it just for the gloriousness of 8k <laughs> <laughs> that, boy that, i just what, want to see what the hell that. what display standard does it use for that? Uh, i think it needs four display ports <laughs> oh, God. or something <laughs> yeah um, um uh, what else were we looking forward to uh a slim 120 millimeter fan from noctua They've been promising that one for a little bit. Um, <laughs> Gosh, yeah, it's yeah. been like three years. Yep. Uh, Do you think we'll like have a release date? Probably not. I want it, but um, I'm sure we I... could get uh, Noctua to give us something. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna just like wave like money in their face to sell me one of the display <laughs> units. Yeah. Like I know it's a I know it's a prototype, but like dear God, <laughs> just <laughs> please. Just so give it to me. The, in the news on uh, in a couple of weeks' time, there'll be uh, instead of like that Razer triple screen laptop going missing, it was just like, oh, not your 120 millimeter fan disappeared. <laughs> I wonder where that could have gone. Hmm. <laughs> Jeez, I remember. Why would you steal a triple monitor laptop? Anyway, I'm not going to do real. Why wouldn't you? Um... <laughs> Because you you can't ever like the whole point of a laptop is you can take it around places, but you can't take it around because it's stolen. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. It's stolen and it's so ostentatiously ridiculous that the moment someone sees it, they'll probably know it's stolen and report you. So it's like, oh, it's great. It's this cool laptop I can take everywhere except anywhere public. <laughs> Good for uh, war driving. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, continue. continue. Um... I don't know. I just want to see more innovation and less RGB and more actually doing something creative. Like, don't just slap mm. RGB on everything. Think about layout of things. Think about the design of things. And can we please, for the love of, bring back proper low profile memory? <laughs> low pro- so we got what? Well, in DDR3, low profile was the very small stuff, like 10 millimeters tall, and you got regular profile, then full, like high profile. Low profile mm-hmm. in DDR4 is what was regular profile last generation, and VLP, which you can only get in server memory, is the 10 millimeter tall stuff. Like, the chips haven't got any bigger. <laughs> What's going on? 
uh, cost? I'm not sure. It would cost less. You could get more on a PCB. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. I don't have a good answer. I, I'll maybe we can quiz G Skull and Corsair and all of them about um, what's going on. And by quiz, do you mean bag? No, I'm th- <laughs> more, thinking more bright and enlighten. Bright. <laughs> Bra- <laughs> <laughs> That'll go over real well. <laughs> hey, we'll show. Let's we... tell memory manufacturers how memory works. <laughs> hey, we'll, we'll just show them that we're passionate. Yeah, passionate's good. Passionate's good. Yeah, uh, it worked for us at CES. <laughs> uh, I guess. I guess that's true. Yeah. Um... I mean, yeah, but well, you're right though. I mean, for DDR3, I mean, you could get stupidly low profile stuff. You could get like... memory this height of the memory clips. <laughs> On the uh, slot. Like, memory is so short, it's incredibly challenging to remove it from the slot, yeah. That's how that's we want just, it. Like, <laughs> it's like, yeah. we, want, we want, like, the antimatter. We want memory that literally creates more space around it. It's so small. <laughs> well, so, like, onboard memory, like, they're going to do, they're considering doing with the APUs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we don't want that because we want to be able to customize it, but. Well, you just have add on. I'm, I'm down for all. Yeah. For, for, for well, what's interesting is that for a lot of for a lot of these compact desktop solutions and other things, like they they just give up and use um L LDP memory, um you know like what is intended for laptops. Except now it's almost not really intended for laptops because lap so many laptops now are following sort of the Ultrabook slash MacBook Air format and they're putting the memory die packages on the PCB in order for it to be even smaller. Ah, oh, so you mean so using like, sodoms? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, right, but like as sodiums used to be like what all laptops use, but now lots of laptops yeah. are not even yeah. doing that. Like they're just not removable anymore because that makes them even more integrated and low profile. And disposable. Correct. Yeah. But like so now it's not really it's not really accurate to call it laptop memory because even laptops aren't using it. Yep. <laughs> oh man. Uh apart from that I can't really think of anything else that I'm Oh really? Uh, like, there's one big thing, there's one really big thing that a certain manufacturer of RED will be announcing, theoretically, during Computex, a lot of, come on, hmm. you can do this. Sega tips coming come out on. with a new water cooler? God, <laughs> screw, screw <laughs> yes, you, John. I know there's a lot of graphics card launches, I'm thinking elsewhere. Elsewhere? <laughs> I'm thinking of the. But it is package. still happening, and it's still happening at and or around Computex, so it counts. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, but it's like, when am I going to be able to afford a Vega card? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> AMD is usually price competitive. Just saying. By price competitive, but yes, it'll, you mean like. But it'll be, but it'll be their. T- it'll be above what they've released so far on yeah. the current generation. Yes. Yeah. So we're talking like two a price point of like. <laughs> Jeez. Three. I wonder what that. I wonder what's going to top off at though. Like, I, I don't think they're going to have anything at, or certainly not above the price point of the 1080 Ti, right? I can't imagine four digits. That would, that would be suicide. Yeah, I'm thinking six nine nine max. I'm honestly thinking five nine nine max okay. for whatever their quote unquote competitor to the to the 1080 Ti is. I'm not sure it really will be, but it might be a better value for the money. I mean, this is what AMD has typically done: is that like either they'll have good, something just the price. overbuilt and ridiculous <laughs> that's better than it, but is super compromised, like the um, Nano R9 R9. What was it? R9 280 X2 295 X2 295 X2. Yeah. Yes, yeah. which um, was perfect for uh, the builders in the world that wanted a slab of hot lava in their computer. Mm. Perfect. <laughs> Just put that thing in your set. Um, and there are nine so, nine like, nine sometimes they'll do one. sometimes they'll do that, and it'll be super high value and high performance. But it's like compromised in a big way. Like it's a dual GPU card, mandatory AIO, whatever. And I'm not saying that like, oh, that makes it a terrible card. It's just that. Like it's so extraordinarily excessive that the only way that they could even get it to work is to like engineer the shit out of that problem. Yeah. Um. So there's that. But like what what they traditionally do really is that they'll have something that is near the equivalent NVIDIA part performance wise, but a little below. But they compensate for that by having the the price be much lower. Mm-hmm. And so as such, like yes, it doesn't perform quite as well. But on a dollars to performance 
ratio curve whatever it's it's a better value it's more performant um for the money you spend i mean that's really most of the time where amd's kind of carved itself out and so On given CPU the fact that graphics cards yeah i mean in general yeah um with the cpu i mean that's kind of a different story they haven't really been competitive in a long time but anyway yeah. um that's why the process was so I'm, I'm just gonna be i'm just gonna be curious <laughs> you know it was interesting with um with ryzen i mean i think they they still have a little catching up to do, but they, they've caught up in a big way. And again, similar thing, like performance wise, it doesn't quite meet any of the quote unquote comparable Intels of the Intels they choose to compare themselves to. However, you know, you get a lot more performance for a lot less money. Mm. Um, especially obviously multi core performance with, with Verizon. So with Vega, it's a little different though, because it's not as if they had this truly monstrous performance gap or architectural gap. Um, it was a lot. It was a lot smaller. So I'm. I'm. My curiosity is really going to be what their strategy is going to be. Are they going to focus more on trying to outperform Nvidia, or are they going to try and focus more on continuing to be the value leader? Um, because they really could, depending on you know what decisions they make. I mean, they could kind of go either way. Like you can overbuild chips, eat a, uh, eat a little cost at the margin, and then just beat it, Nvidia at every level for the same price or you could say we won't overbuild we'll just sort of continue the previous strategy but like we'll consistently be like 50 or 60 dollars cheaper and we'll give you like 90 95 percent of the performance and then we'll have to make the more intellectual argument that like yeah we don't push as many pixels but we kind of almost push as many pixels and hey look you just saved 100 bucks yeah um so that's that to me is the the biggest intrigue is that I really just would love to know what AMD's strategy is. I'm sure we'll um, find out until surrounding the Vega release. Yeah, exactly. So that's what I'm excited for. That's my that's my main thing is just mm. sort of learning more about that because I think that'll have a pretty pretty big impact on us, given the fact that graphics are kind of dictate almost an entire build. Really, I mean, from the size of it to the cooling solution, you know, mm. kind of kind of a big deal. Just saying. <laughs> So how about you, James? What are you looking forward to? Um, definitely Ryzen ITX boards, because I, I think in the SFF community, any uh, hype for Ryzen is kind of dampened by the lack of good motherboards. No um, kidding. Yeah. Tons of ATX. Micro ATX is pathetic. And then yeah, ITX, we have... Yeah. And then ITX, we have the Biostar, which is... I mean, it's competent. It's not anything special, but um... that's <laughs> no, that's a slogan I can get behind. <laughs> We're competent. That's by our start to a T, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like the four-pin power connector, which I don't know. I, I guess it's debatable if that's really that big of a, a problem or not. But then, like, lack of a, a wireless slot. Mm -hmm. um, like, it, it's okay if it doesn't come with a card, but there's not a slot to add one to it, so you're stuck with. Uh, um, using like USB, or if you don't use a video card for some reason, or wait, no, <laughs> ah, there's no onboard on the Ryzen, so you can't. You have to have graphics. So that's Q3, that, isn't nah. it? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, Ace Rock and Gigabyte have both said that they're working on boards. Though I guess I don't know. I'll be interested to see how far along they are. I think it's pretty reasonable based on the speculated. Um, release dates that they will both have like working units at uh, Computex, so that'll be cool. And along with um, the fan, they will also disappear. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who, extra... who would have been interested in those. I'm yeah. going to bring an extra suitcase. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so those boards. Um, Vega I'm interested in, though I'm the problem with the last generation of AMD graphics is the power Performance has been good, but the power consumption has been mm -hmm. quite a bit more than NVIDIA's um, comparable models. So that I mean, kind of hurts been, it for... Yeah, for a small form factor. NVIDIA's just been relentless in terms of power consumption. And I think a lot of that just comes, to the, comes down to the fact that they've tried to sort of vertically integrate their architecture across platforms. And so they're kind of forced to care about the efficiency when they're doing the architectural design, just due to the fact that that has implications all the way down to the bottom of their stack and like portables, you know, Tegra oh, yeah. chips and all like, this. Uh, so. The thousand series, like the same GPUs go into the desktops as goes into the laptops. Right. They're just downclocked. So yeah, it's pretty impressive that 
they've managed that. I think that so looked I'm nice hoping... for uh, Fermi. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm hoping Vega will. Because the problem is, is like with all the people using like um, DC ATX units now, like power limits are very much a problem. Because um, like it's kind of almost a solved issue if you use SFX or SFXL, because you can get like 600 watts on SFX, and then or I know 650 now mm. uh, on SFX, and then 800 on SFXL. So like power is not a problem there. But now people yeah. are downsizing using DC ATX. And so, yeah, power is very much a uh, concern on those. So, like, whatever they can shave off of it on Vega, uh, I think would be really helpful. So, we'll see. I'm I'm worried that they're going to push performance over all else, and that the power consumption is just going to kind of put it out of reach of a lot of SFF builds. So, I'm I'm really uh, curious to see what route they go um, on Vega, and then I don't think. The rumors are really saying we'll see anything from NVIDIA, at least seriously. Um, I think there's been some speculation that we'll see HBM2 cards from them, but I'm kind of doubtful. Um, but I'll be curious to see what they come up with. And then power supplies, I'm really not really... I can't think of anything that's been rumored to really be uh, on the lookout for at Computex. And are we really... Uh, I mean, we're not really, like... I feel pretty happy with like the only thing I would really ask for is like more of what we already have to maybe get some competition yeah, exactly. in there, bring the yeah, price like, down. Um, like the Corsair SF450, SF600 are really good SFX units. Yeah. Um, oh. By the reviews that are out, the SFP dagger looks interesting. Yes, um, and then, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then Silverstone will maybe eventually release the SX. Uh, 500G and SX650G, which also should be good because I believe they're based on the same FSP platform. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, I can't really think of anything like major I would want on the SFX or SFXL side now. I kind of um, want some yeah. other than sorry, I kind of want some yeah, like, to release a one kilowatt just for shits and giggles. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it would be like fun, but it's like 800 titanium rated is plenty. Right. Really it's just it needs a better fan, which we don't have because there's not a slim 120 with fluid dynamic bearings yet. So Noctua. hopefully not Did, did you hear that, out. Noctua? Did you hear that? <laughs> there was a need. <laughs> yeah. So as soon as it comes out, I'm going to mod my SX800 LTI with it. Um, so I have a ultimate <laughs> SFX yeah. LTI power supply. Oh, delightful. Yeah, that'd be awesome. But I mean... Like that'd be nice, but there's not really anything like I'm just desperately wanting out of SFX or SFXL at this point, other than just like like quieter, cheaper, longer warranties, all that good stuff. But better fan nothing control. I desperately need to have. Yeah, better fan controllers always. Um, <laughs> always, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I think mainly motherboards is what I'm looking forward to, like ITX Ryzen, and then also um, uh, X299. Ah, oh, yes. So, Hopefully we'll see some uh, uh, micro ATX because micro ATX is just like it seems like the the more <laughs> time goes on, the worse it gets for poor neglected no micro ATX. Mm. Um, so hopefully we'll see some X two ninety nine at launch, and then probably not at launch, but I'm I'm hoping Ace Rock will do a, a revision of the uh, the uh, X ninety nine E ITX AC, which is what I'm recording off of now it's mm -hmm. awesome board i hope to see an x299 of it um uh, we'll see that'd be that'd be cool mm. um Indeed. i guess more cases is always good though i'm kind of given up on the big case manufacturers at this point um <laughs> like i don't know they just don't seem capable of producing anything that i'm remotely interested in um the corsair one is interesting but it's a pre-built so it eh. Um, and I, I can't think of any other case that's been announced recently from a big company that I actually wanted, uh, like all the cool cases I would like potentially want are all been from like indie, indie developers on the forum and stuff. Um, but I don't know, maybe, maybe one of them like Lee and Lee or somebody will pleasantly surprise us, but I'm kind of doubtful. Um, <laughs> just, yeah. Prove us wrong. Come on. Oh, where's your sense of optimism? <laughs> 
Uh, maybe, but I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that was uh, an optimism screaming through that. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. One thing, though, with Vega that I am really looking forward to is uh, HBM2 should hopefully allow us to see a next generation of short cards. Mm, so, like, yes. a, RX, a nano yeah. replacement. RX, yeah, nano. nano. Hopefully like a nano that wine. doesn't have stupidly spiky power consumption in coil wine. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I mean, that kind of comes down to like it, it, it kind of defeats the purpose if they're that small, if they don't have like power consumption under control. Yeah. Because like if you can like, fit a case that has enough power, then presumably it has room for a bigger card too. Like right. the Dan case A4. I mean, uh, I mean, that can fit a full-size card. So, like, the cases that would really, like, truly require a short card like that usually are using DC ATX nowadays, at least for, like, the indie cases. So, like, if we get something that's, like, something the size of the Nano, but that's more powerful, but that also requires the same or even more power, then it's really not that big of an upgrade, I guess, because a lot of people can't use the Nano with DC ATX because it's so spiky in uh, power consumption so yeah rx480 yeah. RX on a uh, node trunk uh yeah i think there's been rumors about or no the the, the 500 series already came out which mm. they didn't they basically plowed all the power savings into higher clocks so yes. they didn't actually <laughs> save any power in the end so uh, if you were which power limited well for, to Vega. Well, yeah, but the thing with Vega, though, is it's a whole different architecture because it's HBM2. Mm. Um, so quite a bit different than the 400, 500 series. So I don't know. We'll see. Mm. Um, but I, I am worried, though, because they've been consistently doing this for the last several generations is that uh, they uh, they just take the hit on power consumption in order to boost the clocks to compete um, with NVIDIA on performance. So. Yeah. And I'm I'm hoping HBM2 plus the process node shrink compared to the the Fury and Nanos um, will bring power consumption under control. But I'm I'm worried that they're going to try to to compete out. too much with Nvidia. Yeah, on just they're going to try out Nvidia. Nvidia, yeah. in other words. Yeah, <laughs> AMD, if you're listening, release a card with lower clocks, lower power consumption, but make it like an overclocker god. <laughs> Yeah, give it, like, give it like decent power delivery so people, all the overclockers can go nuts and say I doubled the clock speed on this but all of us SFFers can uh, put them in our rigs and not melt holes in our desks or <laughs> well that's not good for marketing though so probably like if it could underclock really well mm. that would be cool unlock cores um, like the uh, the uh, phenoms <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know and model, modable bioses yeah because uh that's become a problem with the thousand series NVIDIA is, is you can't mod the BIOSes anymore. So, <laughs> you know, you know what we need um, <laughs> in this in the spirit of the R nine two eighty five XT, um, like the same thing, but with like Peltier coolers installed on it. <laughs> <sighs> so it's it becomes like it. a fifth. A fifteen hundred watt part, but it's like overclocked to all hell out of the factory. Don't, don't it requires say that its own. AMT might hear you. <laughs> it requires its own power supply just for the coolers. <laughs> I, I do, I also, do also those, every uh... every six months you have to defrost it. <laughs> I do wonder if what, was it Foronic that had that Peltier cooler. I wonder if they'll be a Computex. <laughs> Oh man, I'd be curious to see one of those in person. Because that, like the uh, the engine twenty seven, the thermal take, um, mm -hmm. like many of the stores in Akihabara had it in stock. So that was really weird because it's like such a weird niche cooler. It, it but, like, is. It's um, interesting, but it's weird. But I went to like, I don't know. I think I went to like six or eight different stores in Akihabara looking at computer, like SFF computer parts. Mm -hmm. And I believe almost every one of them that had a decent selection of like of heat sinks in general had the engine 27 in stock. Wow. Yeah. It was like, it's really weird because I, it, like, you don't really hear much talk about it um, anymore. Like, it, when it was announced, everybody talked about it because it's so weird. But like, it's not something that, at least in um, North America, I didn't see like a ton of people using it. Um, of course, like, there's several people on the forum using it, but like, that's a niche 
but like in general though but here yeah like i saw it in stock at several different stores so that was really weird how much is it sorry i don't recall what it was priced at here but uh Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a pretty expensive cooler, right? All things considered, yeah. And it's not like a massively great performer. I mean, it's great for its size, I guess. But speaking of performance, beyond that, Thermaltake was working on a copper version of it. Oh, that would have been gorgeous. I mean, it was either a copper I, core or copper entirely copper one, and I remember them say it was something about released like in twenty seventeen. So maybe we'll see that at Computex. So they are doing a taller one, aren't they? The 37? Yes, there's that as well. Maybe I'll mix it up with that. <laughs> I know one of them had copper. But I, I just think love... the problem is, is that I don't think it actually uses air bearings, though. Like the original... Uh... No, it's not a Sandia. Who developed the original? Yeah, Sandia. So, I don't know. It's kind of a weird... Weird... Kind of derivative, <laughs> I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I'd be curious to see what a, and I guess maybe the problem is, is that the original air bearing design just wasn't feasible in mass production. Um, the tolerance so, is uh, about maybe, too maybe we'll just never see it. Yeah. But ah, that's uh, that was my mistake. Actually, the uh, engine mm-hmm. thirty seven is full. Co- uh, the base is a solid block of copper, mm-hmm. and the twenty seven the base is solid aluminium. That's where I got the copper from. Yeah. The fins are still aluminium. Okay. But yeah, I don't, I don't think there's really much to expect at Computex for cooling, though, now that I think about it. Because, um, like, of course, we're looking forward to a couple, like the Slim 120 from Noctua. And then I believe, at least when they showed it off, I think last Computex, is that they were going to have a new version of the NHL 12 to go with it. Um, and as far as I could tell, it was just kind of slightly redesigned to just accommodate the 120 i think on the bottom as well as the top instead of having the 92 millimeter on the bottom that would be good um yeah and i don't think they had any other sff heat sinks planned um because it seems like it takes them two to three computexes to actually release anything so (laughs) um like even if we see something cool and new there we can pretty much be assured that it's not actually going to come out on the market for at least 2 to 3 more years 2020 so, but, yeah um if it ever shows up and then like if humanity yeah. survives to 2020 yeah um trump but i can't think of anything cooling wise that we're expecting can no, do any of you no, know of anything yeah i can't think of anything yeah i don't either the um, hype has not been real this year <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i mean other than like vega more ryzen boards and then intel cabby lake x or sky lake x and cabby lake x which that's kind of weird that they're both releasing at the same time but that's yeah. a whole other mess intel than... intel is a whole mess right now Ugh. yeah they are <laughs> um i don't know they, what's going they hit on. the panic button a little too hard i think well, I also just think they don't know what the fuck they're doing in terms of segment- no, but seriously, in terms of segmentation and whatnot, like I think they're just freaking out because uh, manufacturing is getting difficult and they're not, you know, the market is changing in terms of needs and whatnot, and so they're trying to like make these like make adaptations, like oh, well, now these weird convertible form factors are a thing, and so we need to design for those, and oh, like manufacturing is more difficult, so we're going to change how. Or, or cadence of releasing shit. And then the, the consequence of that is that this thing that used to have order and be sensible now is disorderly and makes no fucking sense because they're trying to change everything. And so it's just confusing as all hell and overpriced. We're going to have we're going to have the th- a situation later this year where we're going to have the 6000, 7000 and the 8000 series all on sale at the same time. <laughs> Can that be interesting? I mean, how many fucking Intel SKUs are there now that are, like, active? Not, like, SKUs that have uh, that are off the manufacturing line or deprecated by Intel. That are, like, they're making them in factories right now. You can buy this right now. Far too many. <sighs> yeah. You, know, you, you go through the... You go through the list on your local e-tailer's website of how many products there are, and then we're up to, like, four or five pages of Intel CPUs now. It's still, I mean, does, uh, yeah, I do, and you don't need that many. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm AMD sorry. doesn't have that many SKUs, and they've got, at the moment, on New, in New Zealand anyway, you can buy FM2, 
got the APUs. You can buy, you can still buy FX, and you can buy Ryzen, and they still don't even have a third of what Intel's putting out, SKU wise. Oh, Intel. And we do have Ryzen five here now, so it's like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, reviews of that were interesting. Um, I mean, about what I expected, but what, or what did you guys think? I was... I'm holding out for Naples. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like think... holding out to buy? Oh yeah, like 24 cores? <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> I, I'm waiting for the next generation so that this generation price drops so I can mm-hmm. afford it. Yeah, because like AMD has already been like Ryzen 2, which mm. is weird. Um, Ryzen 2, they're planning like 30% performance bump as well. Yeah. Like I think there were several technologies that they couldn't fit into Ryzen oh, yeah. in time. Yeah. I think Ryzen like... was the rushed out get to market now, which is mm-hmm. insane like considering it... how much it got, like how well it's done. Yeah, and then now, like you know, Zen two or whatever you want to call it, um, will be like this is what it would have been if if we weren't under a massive time crunch. You know? <laughs> Zen two sounds like a uh, Linux distribution. <laughs> it does actually. <laughs> Yeah, like, oh god, like, I can imagine the... like a conversation with like uh, OSS zealots. Like, well, oh, dude, what do you run? Oh, I run. <laughs> I run Gen two on Mazento. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even complete the joke. I found it so funny before I said it. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, god. Anywho, I wonder if people run Linux on those things anyway. A lot of people are there. Don't. Are there are there competent Linux drivers for Ryzen? Yeah, quite a lot of people do because of the Maybe massive be ma- because Linux can take it, take advantage of cores more effectively than Windows can. It's uh, a lot of people who like doing multi threaded stuff uh, go for the AMD CPUs. Because more cores for your dollar. In spots saying that AMD has dedicated Linux drivers, which I guess would make sense. Yeah. Fair enough. I don't. I don't really use Linux anymore. I used to. I, I used I get, to be one of those. One of those guys. <laughs> I, I get my daily uh, Linux updates from Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Just like uh, Microsoft is uh, releasing Lin- uh, Linux distributions in the uh, App Store. That's right. And uh, also iTunes is available in the App Store. That's right. Or <laughs> Apple Music is now called. Oh, it's Apple, Apple Music. Music. Okay. Whatever it's called nowadays. I don't follow that. <laughs> it's what it's called, man. Mm. Don't know what to tell you. But so yes. what are you wanting to see at Computex, Joshua? Uh, you guys took all of the things I wanted. The main thing I, was, <laughs> as I already mentioned was the graphics stuff. Um. I don't know. I mean, a lot of it for me is just going to be like the experience of actually going to one of these trade conferences and having conversations with vendors. Like, I think the most interesting thing and cool thing and potentially valuable thing for the community and also just for us is going to be the fact that we're going to have the opportunity to have a lot of FaceTime with a lot of um, a lot of the companies that we you know do coverage on. Um, and that's insanely valuable in a variety of respects. Um and you know we had a limited opportunity to do that for CS, obviously, which um, Drew generously uh, went to on our behalf. Um, but yeah, like I'm I'm ready to meet some people. Mm. <laughs> yeah, all of the reps that are, I've been contacting over the past couple of years, um, I've been contacting over the past couple of uh, weeks and organizing meetings and finally getting to meet these people, and finally getting to meet the other jays that i've been doing business with for the last couple of years that's right we have literally (laughs) never met in person nope oh god okay hold on someone why would you why would you share this in the chat lokomoto why would you (sighs) (sighs) we don't talk about are they gonna be at computex yes they are and i am going to their booth oh i think so they are they should lock john in a in a booth with we, the, the John, John, can you explain what's going on in the chat for, for our listeners? Well, uh, Locomotor has posted a picture of, I think it's the Bitfenix pillow. The, uh, is that really the name? Yes. <laughs> yes. I, sh- <laughs> I couldn't remember if that actually was the retail oh, name. Or just it's the a, the, uh, it is the, a computer. 
Oh, yeah. it's the portal now. It, it, it describes it perfectly, though. No, yes, have, it is yeah. a computer <laughs> so shitty. Yeah. No, they, um, Even the name is a joke. The, the, the prototype was called the pillow. It's now called the portal. Because it kind of looks like a sentry oh. turret. Thing. Okay, so they didn't, they didn't actually call it the pillow, though. Yeah. Okay. But it yeah, was but originally called the pillow probably... at Computex last year. I know, that's year. what it's crazy, is that they did call it the pillow when they first showed it, which was yeah. just... Yeah. It was, like, so meta. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, I, I, but Phoenix is at Computex, and I have already planned to go to their both. Take that as what you will. <laughs> will that be on camera? <laughs> that will be on camera. I've Please. been in trouble with them before. I probably will be in trouble with them again. <laughs> hey, I tells it as it is. <laughs> That's right. We are honest. Yeah. You don't sugarcoat shit. <laughs> nope. Oh man. I wonder if I get kicked out of company takes. <laughs> <laughs> but like, here's the thing. Like, I, I if one of us prodigy, brings, like, a, one of us needs to bring an Ace Full Mini or something like that to the event. I will carry it in my backpack the entire day, so I can walk into the Bit Phoenix booth, hold it up next to the cases, and go, nope, and nope. 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 <laughs> uh, what you doing? What you doing? <laughs> ay, ay, ay. That oh, prodigy yeah. man. That that set that's a SFF back like <laughs> at least three years. <laughs> oh man. Well, this is this, make... this is small form factor, right guys? <laughs> yeah. It didn't make ITX popular though. You had to give it back. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, in a case that could hold a full ITX, ATX board, practice. Extended ATX. There was a guy on the but Tony yes, Mac, you Tony are Mac correct. I'll give you that. Six forums that put a ATX dual socket motherboard in a Prodigy. Mm. Yeah. Ah, like a motor saying EEB, which is even bigger than EATX. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho. Uh. So yes, so meeting people and yeah. graphics developments, I think, are going to be my highlights personally. Mm. Right. Alrighty. Have got anything else? So I don't have anything <laughs> else to talk about, to be honest. I've got so much stuff to do. <laughs> I'm also very tired. It's now 9 a.m. here, so I really shouldn't be tired, but I got up at like 7 a.m., <laughs> which is like a stretch for me on a weekend. So. Uh. That's now one <laughs> what? for me. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I, in your shoes, I wouldn't be getting to bed for another hour. That's mm. why 7 a.m. is so painful. <laughs> no, I'll Go be getting it too. My, my kids wake up in about four hours. Aww. Wait, really? <laughs> they wake up early on the weekend, too? Yeah, body clock. Uh, yeah. That's you, nice. get, you get kids into a routine like, to make the weekdays work. It ruins your weekend. Yeah, yeah. Because five, I think that's five out of seven is a large proportion of their week. Hmm. Well, speaking of school hours, that were just random. It's like I don't know what the school hours are here in Japan, because like there's school kids running around like all times of the day, and it's really weird. Um, so is it typical for them to be to have school uniforms? Like, is that normal? Yes, like okay. that is totally not just like an anime trope. They actually do have uniforms, and yeah, that's like totally normal here, which is really weird. That's totally normal um, here. My kids wear school uniforms. Yeah, I feel like that's pretty common in most places, actually. except for the except for the United States. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's really weird because I'm not used to seeing, and also like um. I guess just because Japan is just so safe. It's like you see like a kid walking by himself at 8 o'clock at night coming and home from high like, school. Uh... Yeah, it's like you would, like, if you tried that in America, that would just not fly. Um, but yeah, it's like totally common here. It's oh, so weird. According to Google. Yeah. I like that though. I like that their society <laughs> allows that. Yeah, yeah to... like public transportation <laughs> is just amazing. Like, oh, it's so nice. You can just walk everywhere and just take the subway. Or, or actually, it's the train most of the time. Um, unless you're, like, really downtown. Um, it's usually the train. Um, but, yeah, I took the uh, the Shinkansen, the bullet train. Ooh. It's so nice. It's range um, on something K an hour. Yep. Um, it's actually, like, a, it's weird, though, because it's actually a lot noisier than I thought it would be. 
Um, and I guess it's because it's um because it obviously it's on the ground, so the air is a lot thicker than it would be in an airplane. Yeah. So even mm. though you're going a lot slower than an airplane, I think there's a lot more buffeting because of the air pressure. Um, so surprisingly, it was a lot noisier than flying, um, as far as like wind noise. Um, so that was kind of unexpected. I, I, I guess it just never occurred to me that it, I would, I always thought it would just be like a lot quieter, but it wasn't. Um, you also see a lot of um, yeah. videos of the Shinkansen that they've been edited to remove such noise. Yeah, you can't hear presenters um, talking But it's it. super convenient because it's basically just a fancier train. Mm -hmm. So like you buy, you had to buy your tickets. I, I, actually, um. So, uh, depending on which one you take, so you buy tickets, um, like specifically for the Shinkansen, but then also you have like your normal, like just a train ticket to get like through the station. Um, so you kind of had to buy the ticket twice, depending on how you buy it, which is kind of weird, but, uh, like, yeah, you just, you have your ticket and you can either get reserved seats. So like you'll have like car, like six seat two B or something, whatever. Um, or you could buy unreserved tickets where it's just kind of first come first serve if there's room on the train on or on those specific cars. And yeah, you could literally show up just like two minutes before the train leaves and like no big deal. Um, huh. It's just, it's so convenient. You don't have to get there really early. You don't have to go through security. You just kind of like, if, if you have reserved seating, you can just show up like right before they uh, leave. And then if you're unreserved seating, then you had to show up early if you want to make sure you get a seat. But it, gotcha. it oh, it's so convenient. Huh. Um, yeah, it's amazing. Um, it's kind of expensive, though, actually. Uh, if you have to travel, like, more than probably, like, an hour or two away, it's actually cheaper to fly. Oh, um, I believe that. Yeah, trains yeah. are expensive. Yeah. So that was... At least, uh, at least there it's nice. I mean... I don't know if you guys have ever uh, rode on Amtrak on the East Coast. We actually have to pay extra to not get mugged. It's really, <laughs> <laughs> it's really something. Let me tell you. But no, but I I kid. But actually, you do have to pay extra. But no, uh, it's this. It's a similar thing where for, first off, the trains are worse. But um, very often, it's actually less expensive to just fly a distance. Um, if it's if it's even just a little further away than an hour or two, um, so that doesn't surprise me. But at least the trains are nice. And... Oh, one thing though is that they're not always on time. Um, yeah, so like, I, I, I mean, I've always heard like, of course, you always hear like Japanese trains are like they're always on time. They're just always on time. It's like nope. nope. They're not. <laughs> um, they like, do give I... you a note if you, if they're late though. Um, if you need it for uh, I, well, I don't know. The sign may be <laughs> late, but I can't read the sign, so I don't okay. know. <laughs> well, okay, so maybe trains aren't always on time, but like, is the trope of like culturally people care about timeliness? Is that true? Uh, like if, you're, if you're three minutes late to work, do you get excoriated by your boss? I'm assuming so. I haven't personally experienced <laughs> it, so I don't know. But I mean, the trains are generally on time, but there has been probably. There's probably been like five or six times where it's like been a couple minutes late. And I think once it was like 10, 15 minutes late. And then there was like one day where uh, I think there was an accident or something like that. And like that the whole time schedule is completely screwed up. Um, or actually, I think that's happened twice. So, yeah, they're, the trains aren't as perfect as like people hype them up to be. But they are really nice, though. Oh, like these the the stereotype of like rush hour and like people having to like just like almost get pushed by the conductors to fit into the train uh -huh. that is totally true like, <laughs> i've, I've, I've ridden, seen the videos man <laughs> yes i've ridden the train a few times at rush hour and like it being like shoulder to shoulder jam-packed that is not an exaggeration it is completely true how do people get um, out during, like, you have to empty the whole train for, like, three people in the middle of that crowd, sandwiched in the bus you, to get out. If you miss your, if you miss yeah. your um, station, you're stuffed. Just carry, have to go to the next yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. The same um, pretty much almost happens yes. in Auckland on the uh, oh, really? rush hour trains. If you are stuck halfway down the, the carriage yeah, and you miss your um, platform, too bad. Tough nuggies. And, and the people leaning against the doors as they and you see like people fall out when they open the doors during rush hour. <laughs> mm -hmm. Man, maybe I should like stop complaining about the MBTA in Boston. Yes, you should. So, like, those problems. People like 
um, like people are really good about queuing up though. So like, like what'll happen is like on the platform, it's marked where the doors are or like mm. where the doors will be when the train pulls up. Oh, so people so like, will line up. Yeah, oh, people will cute. line up. And that's then not cute. only that, well, it gets better. So they'll line up and then the train will show up. And then like kind of the couple seconds before the doors open, everybody like moves towards the train that's in line, but mm. they'll stand to either side of the door. Oh. Um, so everybody that's coming out just goes like down the middle. And then like once everybody's kind of gotten off the car that needs to, then like the people standing on either side will then walk in. Like it's, it's so amazing. Okay. That um, Boston needs to emulate because yes. it is d- disgusting how we treat yeah. each other. And, oh, we've, uh, we've got that but, kind of thing here. That's pretty good here. But we? not even like, not only that. So that's the, the train station, right? Um, like, 7-Elevens, and I think others, or yeah, I know for sure other stores do it too, will have markings on the floor where you're supposed to queue up for their cash registers. And like, they're not suggestions. Like I once accidentally cut in line because like I was kind of standing around and like Mm -hmm. there was like a cashier available and there wasn't anybody nearby. So I just started walking to it. And then he pointed at the floor and was like, no, you have to go over there and stand there because that's where the line starts. (laughs) So I... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it was really weird because there wasn't anybody else in line. So then, like, <laughs> by the time I walked to it, of course, somebody else got there. So it's like they they take their queuing very seriously here. Um, oh, that's which, wonderful. I mean, it can be awkward if you don't if you're like me and you're a stupid tourist and you don't realize it. But like, it's so <laughs> amazingly efficient. Which is it's why so they fun. do it. Oh yeah, yeah. and like. Japan is like very crowded, so I, I can see why they do it. Cause um, like uh, um, like it's a relatively large country. People think it's, but it, like I think north to south, it's about the same as California. So it's a fairly large island country. Mm-hmm. Um, but the population is a uh, hundred million. So you have like a third the population Jeez. of the United States crammed into an island or a set of islands about the, roughly the size of California. But it's even That's worse crazy. than that. Because if you look at a map, like a topographical map, like most of Japan is mountains, like volcanic mountains. So like, like just the Tokyo metro area has like about 40 million people. Um, it's insane. That's insane. Yeah, it's like, it's weird because... Uh, like I went downtown to the Tokyo Metro building, um, which is kind of like the town hall, I guess. Um, but it's a really tall building. I think it's like 40 stories. Um, so went to the top of that cause there's an observation deck and like mm-hmm. literally it was just metropolitan as far as the eye could see. Um, it was just insane. Like every direction you look, there's nothing but Metro. And, uh, it's, it's really weird though, because like an American city, you'll have like a really built up core downtown in a lot of the big cities. But then like, as soon as you get outside, like the downtown core, like the business core, like all the skyscrapers go away. And then like, you'll have like kind of multi-story buildings for a little bit. And then it's just all suburb. Like Hmm. here, it's just like multi-story buildings, like forever. Um, Like basically until you hit the mountains, it's just like, pretty much every house is at least two stories Um, because they just, they go vertical because there just isn't space to build out horizontal. So like you pretty much don't see a a house that's like not two stories. And then of course there's like apartment complexes and stuff. And then um, at one point I stayed in a Airbnb apartment. Um, Like this is when I took the Shinkansen. I took it to this uh, big Southern Island. And I stayed in an apartment. I think it was like 120 square feet. Um, My goodness. And that's including... The whole like the, apartment? Yes, including the bathroom. It was 120 <laughs> square feet. That's ridiculous. Wait, 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 let me... Let me whoops. Let me Do you have photos? That for your, our, our metric friends. Uh, <laughs> no, no, Freedom <laughs> Units. Freedom Sorry, Units. The, the, this, educated, the Freedom um, Units only podcast. Yeah, the educated amongst us. So that's about 11 square meters. My lounge is bigger than that. Yep. The room I'm sitting in right now is bigger than that. <laughs> That's terrifying. The room I'm yeah. sitting in so right now is like apartment. 16 to 20. So that was the whole apartment. Um, so, 
Yeah, it was interesting. No, it's actually a lot more livable than you would think because, like, of course, um, in an apartment like that, you don't have a bed. You have like a rollout, like right. food, like, um, like in America, and I, I think most all Western countries, like, you think of a futon and it's like a, a couch that you can like flatten that as a bed. But in Japan, like a foot, like futon, is like a um, like it's a mat, uh, like a fold up mattress that you would lay out. Um, so like during the the day, you would have it like rolled up in the corner, so it doesn't take up space. So it's almost like a camping little... mattress, like a foam camping mattress. Yeah. So yeah, that was interesting. Is a tiny little apartment, <laughs> but that's really common because just there's there's really there's no space. Like it's insane um yeah and so yeah i can see why S so yeah sff is a pretty big thing here like definitely more so than anywhere else I've <laughs> and ever it's seen. literally because they need this space <laughs> yeah so like because you see this debate a lot on like reddit and like various forums and stuff like especially like a um like on our forum you don't see it because everybody's kind of uh um into it but like on other like mainstream forums you'll see especially like when sff news comes out or sff discussion and they'll be like, like oh this is just because asian people well like you'll see the pink like people will make the remark oh i want to save space but like for most westerners especially like americans like that's kind of like a <laughs> stupid concept it's like <laughs> who lives in a house that small like even like a um unless you're like outside of like downtown like manhattan or something like that or i mean Boston. most people yeah, I mean, most people, even in the, like a big American cities, don't live in an apartment so That's, small that yeah. literally having a smaller computer will actually make a noticeable difference. <laughs> um, so like when your whole apartment, including the bathroom, is 120 square feet, then it actually yes, literally around. having a smaller computer does make a measurable difference in your living space. <laughs> um, also, so, your computer can now like heat your whole home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um like reasonably and effectively heat your whole <laughs> but yeah even so though like even with that like um like I, I have a whole post on the on the website where i looked at different computer stores in akihabara which is kind of like the uh electronics kind of district of tokyo mm -hmm. um even there though like most of the cases and stuff are atx so it's it's kind of interesting is like even in probably one of the most SFF friendly countries, like even here, it's still a niche. So I yeah. thought that was kind of weird. I just um, had to, sorry, I just had to Google it. The smallest, the smallest legal apartment in my city is three hundred twenty square feet. <laughs> you legally cannot go smaller than that. Uh, Which oh, is I mean, 30 like, square meters. <laughs> I mean, I've been to, like, some nice houses in the States that have, like, I mean, not even, like, not, like, multi-million dollar mansions, just, like, fairly nice houses yeah. um, that have walk-in walk closets bigger than that apartment, you yeah. know, yep. wasn't. So, yeah, it was crazy. Um, but, yeah, the, it's, it's still a niche, but it was pretty well represented, though. Like I said, like, most places have the Engine 27 in stock, Um Almost everywhere I went had SFX power supplies in stock. Um, kind of varying degrees of like uh, variety. Like some places only had like um, uh, like the Scythe and Dirac units, which are like eh, mediocre, I guess. But then there were some places that had like the Corsair and several of the Silverstones and stuff. Um, but I'm pretty pretty sure everywhere I went had at least a couple SFX power supplies, which was cool um and then yeah same thing with motherboards everywhere i went had itx and micro atx um just kind of varying degrees of variety uh cases was a lot more hit or miss um because a lot of places like i think everywhere i went had itx cases but i think there were several places i went to that only had um like one or two that were like really small and the rest of them were more like um kind of like your standard mainstream mm -hmm. um like prodig well actually i didn't see that many prodigies but definitely like stuff like that uh, i saw like an nzxt uh manatee so that was interesting <laughs> seeing Ugh. it in person Ugh. yeah was it bigger than um, you expected it's yeah it's huge like it's ridiculous <laughs> like 
like it's i think the place i went to is sitting next to an atx case and it was it was just as big oh, it's fuck. ridiculous um but uh oh it was really cool though i did get to see um the abby cases oh, yes. uh which is like kind of like the japanese lee and lee like they mm -hmm. they're based in japan and then they make all aluminum cases which mm -hmm. uh like you just you don't ever see them outside Japan really, so it was really cool seeing them in person because um, they're not really they're just really not a thing outside Japan. Um, they're not distributed, and you just don't ever hear about it. Um, Are they so nice? Really, they seem to be. I wasn't really able to examine it that closely, but they I did look at the RS01, I believe is the model, which is it. I'll just say it very. Uh, very or strongly resembles the NK M1. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Uh, but yeah, build quality looked pretty good. But I, yeah, I wasn't able to examine it real closely. But it did look interesting. And then they had a couple other models that I saw. Like there was one that was like an HTPC type of case that looked really nicely built. Um, but yeah, it was just really cool seeing them in person. Uh, oh, and the, yeah, I saw an NK M1 in person, which was really cool. Um, well, I mean, like, I, I've seen him before because I used to own one, but it was really cool yeah. seeing it in the <laughs> store, though. Um, oh, a store had it. Yeah, a store had it, which is really cool. Um, wow. Though it was sitting next to that RSO one, so that was kind of weird. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you got the real one um, or the copy? <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was really cool, though, it was just because it's like, yeah, it's like something that kind of has came out of the sff community and it was sitting on a store shelf so that was just really cool to see um uh and, and yeah like there was one guy i was kind of wandering around so the store i was in um which if anybody who's in the sff goes to akihabara or to tokyo they should definitely go to akihabara and check out the store it's the sukumo ex and it's seven six or seven stories um and a basement of just <laughs> computer parts um and peripherals and stuff and uh like the the store uh floor space isn't that big so it sounds really impressive but it's more like it's still like a relatively it's not like as huge as you would think just saying like the seven story store because it's like each floor is really not that big um but yeah like the top floor was like cases so it was really cool and uh so I was wandering around the floor looking at the other cases, which unfortunately was mostly ATX. Boo. But um, but yeah, I saw one guy who's just like really looking closely at the M1. So I don't know. It's just it was really cool. Um and then uh yeah, that same store had a ton of Noxua stuff, which um most places I went to did not have any Noxua products, like heat sinks or fans. But this place had uh they had, I think, every single consumer heatsink Noxua cells other than the L12, which um, they weren't all in one place, though. Like, there were some on one shelf and then some on a, another shelf elsewhere and then some in a display case. So I may have just missed it. Um, but, yeah, they they uh, they did have every other heatsink that Noxua sells. Um, and then they had most of the, the fans. Um, they didn't have the small ones like the uh 60 millimeter or 40 millimeter that i saw but they may have just been on another rack or something but uh they definitely did have most of them um That's most of like the bigger ones so that was really cool it's just it's so cool seeing like all these parts like in person in a store because mm -hmm. you just in the u.s you just don't get that or new like, zealand micro center and that's it yeah and like there's uh, so few micro centers Ugh. yeah and then plus kind of the same thing they mostly do like atx so it's yeah. cool seeing, like it was still like a niche here but it was definitely like a bigger concentration than i've ever seen anywhere else um, that's really neat yeah it was really cool uh can't think of any oh i did see um some uh the g chick uh portable monitors so that was cool seeing those in person because i've been thinking i'm thinking about getting one to take to computex mm. so we'll see but uh, that's kind of an unsolved yeah. problem in many respects. I've I've yet it to is. hear of or see a yeah. portable quote unquote portable monitor that isn't like supremely compromised in one way or the other. Like Cross. it's really <laughs> annoying because like ASUS makes one that's really nice. Like it's thin. It's cheaper than the G Chicks. 
um it just the the industrial design looks a lot nicer but it's it's usb c display port alternate mode only um so it's not thunderbolt it's like i think thunderbolt can do it but it's like um it's like it, it's a weird because like USB Type C is kind of a mess, and like it has no all kidding. these alternate <laughs> modes it can support, but optionally support. And I think the only ITX motherboard that supports it is the, I think it's the ASRock Z270 Fatality. I think it's the only one that supports that feature. Oh my god! Um, <laughs> so <laughs> it's really annoying because I think it's a really if it wasn't for that, it would be a really good alternative to the G chicks. Um, so yeah, I, I'm really hoping that. I guess Computex, that is something. Come on. <laughs> yeah, that, I guess that's something I would like to see at Computex would be like a good portable monitor. Because um, like 8K and stuff's cool, but it's not. You can't really lug it around. So yeah. plus, like all those really cool monitors are so expensive. Um, like the 8K and the 6K and then like all the high frame rate 4K and oh, they're so expensive. <laughs> yeah. This is very true. All right. Anything else we'd like to talk about? <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> that, that was the mother of all tangents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a great just... conversation, but holy crap. Yeah, I just want to talk about it because it's cool. no, it's yeah. great. But yeah, I'm sure we'll have all sorts of cool stories from uh, Taiwan, though. That'll be interesting. Oh, yeah. Especially for John, since he hasn't been outside New Zealand in forever. Twenty-two years. Yep. Oh, <laughs> that's like that's only a few years shy of like my life. <laughs> I, I was my son's age when I last left the country. Jeez, where did you go? Uh, Australia. So it's not really leaving the country. <laughs> <laughs> and I was my daughter's age when I went to the States. Mm. So, How old's your daughter? Seven. Aww. My Where'd son, you go? My son's eight. I uh, went to... New York City? Uh, no, we went LA, okay, good. Disneyland, <laughs> San Diego, then popped across the border and said Tio, uh, Tijuana for yes, lunch. Yeah. And then... Yeah. for lunch <laughs> literally we went we went across the border to i go went to mexico why did you go to mexico lunch <laughs> we went across we went across the border to go, we're part of a tour group and we went across the border no, to no, go no, eat in a hard rock cafe Ooh. <laughs> that must have been an experience well considering i had kids my own age coming up to me and begging um <laughs> yeah yeah mm. Mexico's pretty different now than it was then, but it's still... Yeah, it was 22 years ago. <laughs> yeah, it depends, on where, it depends on where you go, but... I'm old. <laughs> you're not that old, but, like, within this 3Js group, you're, you're pretty old. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm the mature one amongst us. <laughs> uh, no, the wise. Wisdom, right? Old. You're, you're old, so you're wise. Uh, I'm definitely I, wise. I, wisdom. I, I've, I've definitely experienced a lot. Oh, take that as you will <laughs> i will <laughs> oh boy all right and on that note I think, I yeah, I, yeah before one of us confesses to a crime <laughs> oh boy all right let's wrap this up I, we we've gone on long enough uh my name is josh ramirez aka playful phoenix thank you so much for tuning in i was joined today by the other jays we were all here. That includes John Morrison, a.k.a. Confucius, as well as James Shell, a.k.a. Avophobia. I would ordinarily ask you guys uh, what's coming up, but I think we all know what's <laughs> coming up. So <laughs> I think that's kind of all we've been talking about for the past few hours. So uh, we're not going to... We're going to have a couple of quiet weeks. <laughs> that's, yeah, very quiet. You know, nothing going on. <laughs> totally boring. Totally. Yep, <laughs> that's what's going on. So, needless to say, the next time listeners you uh, listen to us, you'll actually be seeing us, and we will be very far away from where we are now. Yeah. Uh, but until then, thank you so much for your support, and we will catch you. What two weeks? Two, two and a half weeks. weeks. When are we doing? Two weeks from now. We will catch you in two weeks. Two weeks. Bye bye. <laughs>